looking at Financial Management 2601, we're looking at the third set of notes. In yep. this particular set of notes, you'll see we're focusing on this, time value of money. This is something that you've seen briefly in FAC 1601. They cover it a bit, but they don't take it too far in terms of the actual workings. There is another module that UNISA offers, which is DSC 1630. I'm not sure if you've done this one or not, have you? Uh, I haven't done 1630. I did DSC... Uh, I can't remember then. which code it was, but it wasn't 1630. Okay, all right. It might have been 1520 then, because um, there are two different DSC modules. The one focuses more on the mathematics, where you cover more of the algebra, the, the straight lines, the yeah. um, derivatives and calculus. And then the other, which is this one, focuses a lot on the financial mathematics. The whole module is looking at financial mathematics. And time value of money is a very big focus in that one. So I just wanted to find out what your background was, because if you had covered one of those before, it would make this section very, very, very easy, because the DSC takes it a lot further in terms of the calculations. All right, but you're going to cover everything you need to know in this particular section. Okay, so study unit three gives you all the basics. We cover all the things that are important and we go through all the calculations as well in order to do the workings. Um, before we start with the actual workings, do you have your financial calculator nearby? Yeah, I do. All right, we're going to be needing it. Which model, which uh, make and model do you have? I've got the HP 10B2 Plus. Okay, perfect, all right, great. Okay, so you're gonna need a financial calculator, especially for these calculations. Uh, when looking at the actual module, you'll see we'll focus on, obviously, time value of money, so we need to understand what that concept is. We need to look at future value and present value. We need to determine where those amounts are in the actual calculation. We also need to determine what a perpetuity is. Okay, What does that mean? We need to look at annuities. Those are recurring payments. And then we need to discuss a mixed stream of cash flow. That's something that's important from a capital budgeting point of view. Okay, So if you are going to be doing more finance, you'll see that a lot. And this is the, ca uh, not cash, capital, wrong word, capital budgeting. Okay, and that's where the time value of money is applied in finance, capital budgeting. Okay. So when looking at time value of money, we need to understand compounding. Compounding is a very important concept that comes up a lot in calculations. Okay, compound interest, compounding taking amounts forward and we're looking at that interest that we're going to be deriving on a, on a particular amount. You get okay. different types of interest, so we'll discuss the difference between an effective rate and a nominal rate. There is a difference between those two. We'll compare what they are and we'll describe or we'll discuss how they're important from a financial management point of view. And then the last bit okay. is just understanding how to amortize a loan. So that's a function that you would use on the calculator where you'd be able to identify what is the balance outstanding, um, what is the total amount of interest that's paid, what's the capital portion of the loan, and those are different amortization workings that we need to do in terms of starting value, end value, and we need to look at the actual process. Okay, so the first bit that I'm going to ask you is just some basics. You might have a pretty good idea of this because... Um, as I said, basics are covered in um, FAC 1601, the accounts module, and that's a, a short brief section right at the end of the textbook. So when looking at time value of money, Nina, what is it? What's your view and what is what is that, what does it mean? When someone talks about time value of money, what are they trying to explain? What, what does the concept entail? The, isn't it usually associated with the, the future value of an investment or how much you're going to be paying in future that sort of stuff definitely okay so you spoke about the future so definitely we'll consider what something is worth in the future so if we're looking at an investment we're hoping the investment will grow over time um, to give us a specific return what else yeah. could time value of money refer to is it always about the future uh, no it could also be that you uh, have an amount to pay off and you can calculate how much you should be paying off at a certain 
over a certain period of time as well, can't you? Yes, you can. Good. Okay, so that's another good application. So with time value of money, we could also look at money over time. So not only at a future point, but over a period. So that would be maybe a monthly amount or a yearly amount. Okay, good. And what about today? Could we look at things today? Uh, yeah. Yes, you could. Okay, so another concept in terms of time value of money is today in terms of time zero. So you could look at the present, you could look at the future, and you could look at over time, okay, over a period. Right, so with time value of money, we're just focusing on the actual concept of value changing as we either go forward or backwards in time. Okay, so because of things like inflation, okay, we'll describe how that will affect the time value of money. Okay, inflation will definitely affect money or buying power or assets, and we need to discuss that. What okay. is the key in terms of financial management? We spoke about the goal of this particular area. The goal is to do what? To maximize the, the value of the company. Correct. Okay, so in order to maximize value, obviously we need to compare different projects or different investments. So when looking at finance, you're going to be applying this tool. Remember, time value of money is just a skill that can be used in different places. Okay, so even economics, you use a bit of it. In accounting, you use a bit of it. In investments, you use it. You use it in lots and lots of different areas because it's a universal concept. Okay, it's like mathematics. Okay, we use maths in other subjects, not just in algebra or, or, or geometry. Okay, it's used in other areas as well. So with time value of money, we're going to be applying it here because it allows us to measure shareholder value no problem all right okay so um the point i was making here with time value of money is time value of money is a measure or a skill or a tool that we can use to measure the accounting records okay uh, in terms of the different areas. So for example, if I'm looking at assets, if we look at liabilities, that's one way of presenting information. Okay, we saw that last week. We know financial statements give us information. We need to use that information to make a decision. So to help us make a decision, we need to measure things accurately as possible and time value of money allows us to do that. So it's a way to measure value. And is value measured today or in the future? Uh, can't be measured at both points? It can, but if we're making a decision, when do we make those decisions? Now. Correct. Okay, so decisions are made today and they're going to materialize in terms of future benefits. So in the future, I could either get more or less depending on what sort of decision I've made. If I accept the project, the project might be good and generate lots of future cash flows, or the project could be bad and I'll have outflows perhaps in the future that, that may not be what I had planned for in terms of the actual um, investment, Okay, deciding on which project to go with. So we're looking at timing. Timing is important because you're going to be looking at now, which is T0. Okay, So we always represent the present with T0, time zero. And the reason why I'm showing you this now is because this is key. In questions, you're going to have to draw a timeline especially when they are more complicated. Okay, you do get questions that are quite long, and if they are long, the best way to go about the calculation is to draw a picture. Draw the timeline, show where the cash flows are, and then you'll be able to discount everything back in time quite easily. So the important point here is that, and one application that makes it very, 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 very important is the um, share valuation. Okay, the last chapter in this module. Share valuation or stock valuation. Timelines are key there. Right, you'll see in past papers you get like a 10, 15 mark question asking you um, to work out the value of a particular asset, okay, i.e. the share price, um, taking the dividends into consideration, taking things like growth into consideration, and all of that can be shown on a timeline. So the best sure. way to approach it would be to draw a timeline to show the start and to show the end and to show all the different periods that occur over time. 
and then you'll take those cash flows and you'll insert it on the actual timeline so if i get a dividend in year three i'll show a dividend in year three so it doesn't matter where you are in terms of time we need to understand the entire picture because can i evaluate the dividend at year three with a price at year zero um you should be able to well i can but i need to do what to the year three dividend you need to calculate it i need to take it back oh, okay. okay so the timing is key because you need to look at everything at the same point in time so if the dividend is only going to be paid at time three or in year three that's in the future you can't make a decision now with a dividend sitting at year three you're going to have to take that dividend back in time to understand what is the dividend worth today because if i know what the dividend is worth today and i compare that to maybe the the price of that particular asset i'll then be able to make a decision are we going to or aren't we going to buy that particular asset okay okay so just the important bit timing everything must be at one point in time you'll have lots of things at different points in time because they'll describe a situation so maybe payments that are going to be made over time or maybe a final payment that will be made at the end of the project it doesn't matter what they're discussing when making a decision we always need to look at one point in time so decisions are made today so we normally take everything back to time zero to determine are we going to accept or reject the project so one point in time is key when making a decision all right just take everything to one point that's the key next bit we've got two timelines so now we need to discuss the difference between discounting and compounding when you hear the word discounting a discount is going to make things bigger or smaller smaller correct so if i'm making things smaller am i going forwards or backwards backwards correct okay so that's the key i'm taking a month that are in the future and i'm moving it back i'm taking it back in time so if i'm doing that what variables are we going to need then to take it back in time uh, you're going to need your future value i'm going to need the future value definitely your interest rate i'm going to need a rate good and your time period good and i'm going to need an n how much time perfect okay so that's taking one amount back in time it doesn't matter what the amount is it doesn't matter where the amount is if i've got n and i've got i and i've got the amount that i want to discount i can then calculate the pv so the yeah. pv will be right at the beginning okay at time zero yeah T zero PV. Okay, and that's discounting. So the terminology that's used when referring to taking a month back is discounting. That's the that's the word that's used to describe that particular application of the time value of money. The opposite okay. is true for taking a month forward. They then look at the uh, end value, which is right at yeah. the end and end, yeah. we're going to then need which variables uh you're going to need present value interest rate and time correct okay and the time would be the n again which would be the end yeah. and i'm calculating the f which is right at the end that's what i'm trying to get in this example i was trying to get the pv in this one i'm trying to get the f yeah good just some concepts um you're probably familiar with some of these already uh let's go through the list the first is present value. We know that's where, at which point in time? T0. T0, that's the key. Because I'm looking at now. So when looking at timelines, when drawing timelines, we'll denote the present value at time zero. Future value could be any amount at any point in time from time one onwards. Okay, so yeah. future value can only be at time one or further. further on, yes. Okay, so time 10, time 20, time could be anything, and that's future. Lump sum okay. is a single amount. If we've got a lump sum, 
Will you have multiple amounts? Generally not. No. Because it's a lump sum, it's a single amount. So if they're talking about one amount and they're talking about other amounts, then you've got a lump sum and an annuity because there'll be okay. other amounts to consider. If it's uh, an annuity, but... it needs to be regular. So are those amounts going to have to be the same? Um, not necessarily, but well, they, they, they generally are. Okay, they have to be if it's an annuity. Okay, so if it's annuity, it has to be the same. But right. if they're different, then you're talking about a mixed stream of cash. Okay, all right. Okay, all right. So annuity is very specific to a regular constant amount that doesn't change. Okay. Constant. So what happens with like if it's an annuity and then you say every year increase the annuity by 10%. Okay, then that's a growing annuity. So it's still a, it's still a regular amount which uh, which increases by a fixed amount or percentage. So okay, it right. would still be an annuity but it would be a growing annuity. Okay. Okay, you you don't cover growing annuities in this module. Um the DSC 1630 covers it. Um but just to answer the question, it is an annuity. It's still an annuity, but you just provide for it over a period, and there's a separate formula for it. Okay, you can't do it manually. You'd have to use a formula for it. Um, you can work it on the calculator though, but it takes a few extra steps. Okay. Right. So just remember, lump right. sums one amount. Annuity is several, but they must be the same. Yeah. If it's a okay. mixed stream of cash flow, it's like an annuity, but all the amounts are different. Okay. Okay. Compound interest, you've probably heard the term a lot, interest on interest. So what does that mean? Well, they calculate the amount owed to you based on the amount that you've grown with interest. Correct. Okay. So the returns that you earn actually generate more return because it's reinvested. Yeah. Okay. So a reinvested amount is a form of compounding. And with compounding, I can take amounts forward or backwards. The compounding just refers to this concept, interest on interest. Okay. Discounting and compounding we spoke about, the ones taking things back, the ones taking things forward. With yep. interest though, you can get interest that's going to be compounded yearly, semi-annual, quarterly, monthly, or more frequently. It could be anything. Okay. Interest is something that you're going to derive from having an amount um, at the beginning. Okay, so that amount will compound. Okay, it'll get bigger. Or you could have a future amount that will get smaller. When we talk about the interest rate, okay, so the actual percentage, the interest rate could either be compounded yearly, annually, semi annually, monthly, depending on the situation. Does that change the future value or present value? Uh, it changes the future value. It would change both. The Okay, if, if you're talking about the future value, how would the interest rate change the future value? If you're calculating from your present value. Yes, how would it change it? Would it, would it increase it by it, more it, or less it, if you change increase, the interest? It would increase it. It would increase, correct. Okay, so interest determines how quickly or how slowly something grows Okay, in terms of compound growth, or it tells us how quickly or how slowly the discounting is applied. Okay, so amounts either get very large very quickly, or amounts get very small very quickly, or they get very big very slowly, or very small very slowly, depending on which way you're going, forwards or backwards. Okay. Okay, so you get two okay. types of rates, nominal and effective. Do you think there's a difference? Uh, yes. Yes, there is definitely a difference between the two. Which is the one that's important? Effective. Correct. This is the one you use in the actual calculation for your workings. Workings <laughs> use the, calc um, the effective rate. Okay, so we don't put nominal rates in the calculator. We put effective rates in the calculator because the effective rates will take compounding into account. Okay, which we'll see just now. Okay. Right, so let's describe a few different cash flow patterns that we will have. I've given you the different variables that you will use for a time value of money calculation. 
are we going to need to use equations for these workings? Uh, if you want to, but no, if that's what the calculator is for. Correct. The calculator is going to be the best tool to help you with the calculations. Yeah. The only workings that you need to show you, Nisa, even if you're using the calculator, is the variables that you're inserting. So if you're going to be inserting an N representing time, or an I representing the interest rate, or PV representing the present value, or FV the future, you're going to have to identify the variables. So when ans answering questions, just state the variables, especially in the long questions, because in FIN 2601, you write half multiple choice, half written. So in the written, you need to show as many of the workings as you can. In the multiple choice, you don't have to. You can just get the final answer. So workings aren't so important there. But okay. when you do do workings in the long questions, it's always worthwhile, even when using the calculator, to show your steps, to tell the examiner, well, this is what I'm inserting in my N. This is what I'm inserting in my I. Okay. All right. So the, the red are the most important because at a bare minimum, I'm going to need how many variables? Three. I'm going to need three. Because if I've got three, I can calculate the fourth. Yeah. The unknown. If I've got payments, which is the PMT variable, this yep. is special because it relates to what? Uh, isn't it an annuities? Correct. Or, it relates yeah. to an annuity. Good. Only an annuity. Why? An annuity has a regular recurring amount that's the same that doesn't change. Yeah. You can't use PMT for any other scenario. Okay, so let's okay. look at some examples. I'm going to show you some cash flow. You need to tell me which variables we're going to use. Okay, so 100 is here. Okay. What, are we, what am I going to do here with that example? Uh, you're calculating future values, so you're going to use 100 as your present, uh, 8 as your interest, and 5 as your time. Correct. Okay, so when looking at this, how would you describe the cash flow pattern? Is there a pattern here? No, it's no pattern. It's just simple compounding, taking one amount forward, that's it. Yeah. Do you agree? Yep. Okay. Let's contrast that with another example. All right. What happens if I have this? What is that? Uh, that's an annuity. Good. Thanks. Good. Okay. So here you've got payments. How many payments do I have? Six. I've got six of them. So this is actually time. Okay. Let me change that time to time five. Okay, just to make this look accurate, okay, because we've only got five um, points there, so that's time five. All right, do you agree there's an amount here which is at time zero? So does that change it in any way? Uh, yes, it does. Yes, it does. Good. Okay, so when looking at the second example, this is an example of an annuity, not a simple compound or discount type of an equation. It's an annuity because it's a regular amount recurring over a period of time. Okay. If I've got an amount at the beginning, that makes a difference because your calculator has two modes. It has a BEG for begin mode. And end. And it has an end mode. Um, the yeah. default setting on other calculators, so the Sharp and the Casio, when you clear your calculator, it always clears the mode as well, and it leaves the mode as end. Unfortunately, you've got the HP. So yeah. for the HP users, you need to be careful with the begin or the end because you always have to check what the mode is because when you set, to, let's say you set the mode to begin and you press second function, clear the calculator, your calculator is still going to keep it in begin mode. Okay. All right. So just be careful with the HP. The HP, you need to always set it back. So always okay. keep it on end. End is the default setting. So uh, end you, is the default. Well, yeah, default, but not the default that the HP will set for you. Yeah. If you press clear, it goes back to end. 
if you press clear it, it it'll it'll be end if it's end but if you if you um if you change it to begin so change change it to begin on your calculator so press second function beg yep okay and now you've got beg on the screen right yeah okay now press second function clear all you'll see beg is going to stay there it stays there yeah yeah so just be careful all right because in all questions questions aren't going to tell you specifically if the question is in end mode it automat you automatically assume end mode okay. see, so so end mode end mode is the default so on your financial calculator on specifically the hp you need to make sure that your calculator is always blank that you don't have beg on it yeah okay, okay. so it's pretty it's pretty obvious on the screen so yes so the only time the only time you ever change the mode is if they specifically tell you in the question that you're dealing with an amount that's at the beginning of the period. Okay, perfect. You never ever change it, just leave it on end. The only time you change it is for certain scenarios where they specifically tell you that things are at the beginning. Okay. All right, and then the last cash flow pattern. Oh, um, I forgot to add something. So we spoke about this as being an annuity, right? Yes. So what do I use for an annuity? You'd use your PMT. Good. Okay, that's the key. Yeah. All right. So now the PMT has importance because I've got a hundred that's recurring over five periods. Mm. Okay. So PMT okay. is only applicable for an annuity. Only, only, only applicable for an annuity. Okay. All right. So now what happens if I have something like this? Last example. If I have a sequence of cash flow that looks like this. Okay, if I have a sequence of cash flows that look like that. That's the, the mixed mixed cash flow. Yeah, uh, cash. What's it? Mixed. Mixed stream of cash flow. Mixed stream, that's yeah. a mixed stream. Correct. Okay, so can I use PV and FE for this one? Um, no. No. Can I use PMT for this one? Yes. No. Okay, I can't use payment. But no, PMT is only for annuity, yes. Yes, yeah. PMT is only for an annuity. That means I need the same amount every single period. Okay. Yeah. I don't have the same amount every single period. They're different. Okay. So if they're different, I can't use any of those variables. The answer to this we'll learn about later, okay, is CASH, the cash function. Right, so I'm giving you a tool that you can use on the calculator to make life easy, okay, because we'll discuss it when we actually get to questions where you have a mixed stream of cash flow. It's long, it's challenging to get the actual answer because you would have to take how many amounts back? Um, you'd have to do five. Yes, you'd have to take each and every one of those amounts back. Mm. And that's five separate calculations when you could do one using the cash flow. But we'll discuss that later on. Okay. All right, but just to, to make the point again, don't ever use the PMT when you have a mixed stream of cash flow. You cannot yeah. use it. All right. Great. All right. So there's the note about the timeline. It's so important you, you're you comfortable drawing timelines. So when we look at questions, the best thing that you can do is to try represent everything on a timeline. Show the initial in investment in terms of the present value. So what do we invest? Okay. And if I'm looking at the PV, is the PV going to be positive or negative? Uh, it's going to be positive. Well, if I'm investing in the project, so let's say if I'm investing in a project, in terms of cash flow. Uh, negative, no? Yes, negative. Positive. Minus. What? It's minus because it's viewed as an outflow. Oh, uh, yes, of course, man. Okay, okay sorry. So the calculator gets confused if you don't differentiate between outflows and inflows. Okay. You need to differentiate between negatives and positives, which represent inflows and outflows. And when, look, when we're looking at finance, we're focusing on the outflows because that's the investment or that's the initial outlay. 
and then late on we will hopefully get a return either at an end point or over the life of the project okay okay but just remember the calculator will get confused if you don't differentiate between inflows and outflows future value we normally denote as a positive because that would be viewed as an inflow Is that right? When looking at time value of money, the key is drawing timelines. Make sure you differentiate between positives and negatives in terms of inflows and outflows. The calculator okay. will give you an error if you don't make one of your values or variables a negative. Okay, because you need to denote cash flow. So if I'm looking at a project, the project will incur or not incur, but give rise to an outflow when investing. Okay, and late on in the life of the project, we'll get inflows coming in either over the life of the project or at the end of the project. But we need to differentiate between minus and plus for inflow or outflow. Okay. okay, where would the payment be on this diagram? I've left that one out. I've highlighted it in green. Where would you put it? Uh, it would be, if it's an annuity, it would be in between the PV and the FV, wouldn't it? Correct. Okay, so those li little lines in between would represent all the payments. Okay, and you could have many, depending on how yeah. long the annuity is. Something okay. important to remember is to always check that the variables are the same. Okay, so if your N is in months, what must my interest rate be? It should be months per It should be compounded monthly. Yeah. Yeah, so it should be a percentage per month. And if I'm looking okay. at the payment, how often would the payments be made? It should be monthly as well. Correct. Okay, so the variables that need to relate are interest, time, and payment. That's it. Um, present value and future okay. value, they don't worry about time. Okay, because remember, present value is at a point. Future value is at a point. So there's no monthly, yearly, quarterly, anything like that. Yeah. Okay, so the only three variables that you need to check is the I, the N, and the PMT. You need to always check those three. They're the most important because they need to all relate. And that's okay. why, okay, we've got that note over there. Make sure the variables are the same. Not all, just the three. The N, the I, and the payment. Okay. All right, so if you had to use equations, we would use these. Are we going to use them? No. No, we're I, not. Enjoy, I enjoy maths, but I'm pretty lazy. Yeah. It, it takes too long, you're right. Okay, so um, the, the easier way of doing the calculation would be to use the calculator. Okay, just to highlight yeah. one or two things here in terms of theory, if I've got a minus here, I'm calculating present value because I'm taking things backwards or forwards. Forwards. I'm taking things backwards. Okay, because remember, if it's, if it's got a negative oh, sorry, exponent... Yes, yes. Yeah, if you've got a yeah, negative yeah. exponent, you're making the amount smaller, not bigger. Yeah. Okay, so PV equals FV brackets 1 plus I to the minus N. If I've got future value, then the, expo the exponent is positive. Yeah. Because I'm taking things forward. Yes. Okay, so the 1 takes things forward, the 1 takes things back. The 1 grows the amount, the, it makes the amount bigger, and the 1 reduces it. And that's why they sometimes refer to compound interest, okay, as exponential growth, because there's an exponent that's involved in the actual calculation, exponential growth. Okay. Okay, taking things back, taking things forward. That's what we're looking at. Just remember, you don't need to, to actually memorize or use equations. We always, we're always going to use the calculator because that's the best way and the easiest way to get an accurate answer. Yeah. Right, so let's practice. Let's see how good you are with your actual calculator. We can do this manually if you want to. It's not going to make a difference. If I had to substitute this into the equation, I would put 600 here. I would put 1 plus 
the ratio is compounded yearly okay so 10 percent and how many years do i have three three years are the units of measurement the same uh yes yes okay so years with years per year three years i can now work it out right so if you did that manually you could type that into the calculator or you could use a financial calculator to do it so i'm going to discuss that already because that's the right way of doing it your n you'll set in your calculator as three your i three. is going to be 10 and your pv is going to be 600 Nine. and then you'll be solving for fv correct the future value all right so on your calculator you know when you press second function clear all what do you see on your screen for, on the hp on the hp you should be reading this p over y equals one uh no it shows me one p per year which... or, or one p over y that's fine yeah yeah so it, it's either one it's one p over y or p over y equals one depending but is it is it is it showing you one yeah it is showing one okay good so now you need to keep keep it like that so uh, if it wasn't one then you'd have to change the setting on the calculator to make it one but it is in one so now you're ready to do the calculation you've obviously cleared the calculator now we're ready to insert the value so on your calculator you'll press 600 and then you'll press which button what does the 600 represent present value correct and then press the pv okay how much is the interest rate it's 10 10 percent okay so just a note if you're using formulae, okay, if you're using equations, you have to use decimals to denote a percentage. If you're using the calculator, you put in the percentage. Okay. Okay, All so right. you type in 10, not 0, 0,1. Okay. Okay, so now you've put in 10 and then you've pressed the I button, right? Interest rate. Uh, yes, mine's got the I, I per year. But I over it's, Y, it's, yes. Yeah. Okay, that's perfect. Okay, and then what else do I need to put in? your period correct what is the period three three correct. years okay so then you press three and then you press n and now what am i solving for future value good so if i'm solving for future value i'm going to press the fe button and if you yes. press fe what do you get on your calculator i get 798.6 negative okay good right why is it a negative because uh, Oh, weren't we supposed to put a negative in front of the 600? Yes, it doesn't matter which one you put in. If you put in positive or negative, the answer will just be the opposite sign. Yeah. Okay, so you had 790? 798.6. Good. Okay, 798.6 would be the actual answer for this particular question because I've taken the amount and I've compounded for how many periods? Three years. Okay. Um... Uh, not 700 i said 700 600 compounding 600 forward for three years okay. okay right correct well done there's the mathematics if you prefer but we don't need to use that because we've got the calculator right so yep. nino two for you to try i want you to work out the future value for both of these okay Okay, the first one is 41,220 and 63 cents. Uh, 41 to what? 220. 41, 220 and 63. Yeah. And 63 cents. Okay, so let's write that down. Okay, so we've got that. And then let's check your other one. Let's, uh, let's write down your next answer and then we'll check both. Okay, uh, so let's... And the next one is seven thousand six hundred and ninety three. Seven thousand six hundred and ninety three. And twelve cents. And twelve cents. Okay, so those are the answers that you've calculated using what? The formula or the calculator? Calculator. Good. Okay, the calculator is the best way of doing this. Okay, so yeah. all you had to do was identify variables. So just to highlight the variables, this is what variable? Your pre your PV. Good. This is? Your period. The N. And this is? Your I. Good. Okay, so let's check your answers. 
41, yeah, 41220,63, good. And 7693.12 if you round off. Perfect. Okay. okay, same answers, yes? Yep. Well done. All right, so that's looking at what? Future value or present value? Calculating future value. Good. So do you agree the answers are always going to be bigger than the amount that we were initially given? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so if this was a multiple choice question, any amount less than 20,000 for the first one or less than 5,000 for the second one, I can literally cross that out. Yeah. Because I know I'm going forwards in time. And if I'm going forwards in time, the mark needs to get bigger. Okay. Okay. Makes sense? Yep. Great. All right. So now let's do the opposite. Let's take things back. If I take things back, I've got a formula to substitute into, or I can use the financial calculator. What okay. variables would I have here? Well, I need a future value, and I need the rate, and I need the N. So yeah. a project will provide an inflow of 100,000 in five years. Okay, notice, when are you making the decision to accept the project? Now or in the future? No. Correct. So you would want to probably know how much does the project, or how much is the product project actually worth today in today's terms based on what we think we'll get in five years' time. So 100,000 in five years' time is the expectation. If you're going to be discounted at a 50%, what is the present value going to be? Uh, 49,717 and 67 cents. Well done. Okay, good. So you've taken that and you've typed it into the calculator, right? Yeah. Good. That's the best way of calculating the present value. Okay, you just have to identify the variables. So I've put it on screen. Okay. N is 5, future value is 100, the I over Y is 15, and you're solving for the present value. Good. Okay, two more for you to try. Okay. Okay, the first one is 36,751 and 49 cents. And the second one is 17,799 and 93 cents. All right, great. So you've got two answers. Let's check if they're right. Looking at the theory, we can assume that you're probably right because the amounts that you've worked out are less than the amounts that were given the questions. That's a good sign. Yeah. Let's check if they are right. Yes, happy with those answers. 36,751 and the 17,799. Good, well done. Okay, great. All right, so now what happens if I have something like this? What is that, Nino? That is an annuity, a payment. Correct. It's an annuity because I see this. And it's the same every single time. Correct. So what, what variable am I, am I going to use? PMT. Correct. I'm going to use my pay payment. Right. I just want to show you something here as well. Okay. What am I solving for here? Future value or present value? Um, future value. Correct. Future value. So do you agree I'm taking all the months forward or backwards? Forwards. Forward. Forward. And now, where would I be in terms of time? What? When you're done or now? Future value. Because that's what I'm you'd, calculating. You'd, you'd be in the future. I'd be at time five, right? Yeah. Okay, so do you agree if you had to do this manually, you would have to take each one of these cash flows forward, right? Yeah. Okay, so how many cash flows do I need to take forward? Uh, four. Four of them. So do you agree yeah. at at time five, I've got 12,000 plus. Okay, let's take this 12,000 forward. Can you take this one amount forward to time five? So what is your end yes. going to be? 24. One. 
one year, one period. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I thought I thought you're talking about the amount. Yeah, your n is going to be one. Okay, the n is going to be one. The present value is going to be what? Present value would be twenty-four, wouldn't it? Twelve thousand. Because I'm taking this amount. Where is this amount sitting? In the at time four. Yeah. So if I take that one amount forward, I'm going to take it forward for one period. Okay, and you don't include the, the amount at time five? You do. That's the totaling we'll do at the end. Okay, all right. Okay, so um, on the calculator, type in PV equals 12,000. What's the N? N is one. What's the I? It is seven. And then solve for your FE. What do you get? 12,840. Okay. Now we're going to take this amount forward. So now take this 12,000 here and move that forward. Now how many years do we have? Two. Two years. So N is two, I is still seven. What is your PV? Uh, your PV or your FV? Your PV will be 12,000. Oh, sorry, yes, 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 okay. Okay, then uh, I'm solving for the yeah. future. It's, it's 13,738. Okay. Take this one forward. Okay. It's 14,752. Okay. Sorry, 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 14,752 cents. Okay, so two zeros. Yes, yeah, 700 and 52 cents. All right, 52 cents. Okay, we'll add the cents then. Okay, and then calculate the next one. Okay. Now I'm taking the last one. How many months forward? Four. Four, Four yes. And that is 15,729 and 55 cents. All right, so... Do you agree what we've done here is we've taken everything to which point in time? To the FV. Correct, to the time five, because I'm solving for the value at that point in time. So mm. I could have done it this long way, but can you see how long it takes? Yeah. Okay, I still need to add up all those amounts. So can you quickly add them for us? 12,000 plus 12,840 plus 13,738 plus 14,700,052. And the last figure, if we add all those amounts together, what do you get as a final answer? It is... Sixty-nine thousand... Eight? No, no, six, sixty-nine thousand and eight. Oh, sixty-nine thousand and eight, okay. Yeah and seven cents okay so that was doing it the long way what's the shortcut using pmt on the calculator good okay so your shortcut is to insert pmt as um, what twelve thousand, right yes what is your n your n is uh five Good. Okay. Is this begin or end mode? You assume it's end. Correct. End mode. Right. So now if you've typed that into your calculator and have you put in the I? Uh, I made a mistake somewhere. Okay. PMT. Uh, Always clear the calculator before you do calculations. It's a good tip to get into or a good habit to get into. Okay. Um, I've done the calculation and I'm getting 85,839 and 49 cents. Ooh, something's not going right. What are you solving for? Uh, for future value. Okay, so the answer that should, you should be getting is 69,000 was right. So you did get the right answer there. You're just not getting on the calculator. Yeah. Okay, let's try again. Second function, clear the calculator. Is it begin or end mode? Yeah. It's in end mode. Good. Okay, so type in 12,000 and press the PMT button. Okay. 
What is the rate? Seven. So type seven and press the uh, I over Y. Okay. Um, how many periods? Five periods. Five periods. So N is five. Okay. And then solve, compute the FE. Press the FE. Okay. No, I've got the right amount now. Okay, good. Yeah, 69,008 and 87. Yeah, good. Okay, so it, it might just be a... Um, um, a rounding perhaps or there might have been other stuff sitting in your memory somewhere yeah, I might not have cleared properly I think possibly. that might have been a problem possibly okay so just be careful with that um, always try clear the calculator first before doing a calculation okay all right perfect next bit um, oh um, the next bit was the actual calculation so I should have written that here I'm gonna write it down now um, I'm going to write down the amount that I'm putting in. Ooh, wrong place. N is 5. I is 7. Payment seven. is 12. Okay, and that's what you solve for, which is what we got. Yeah. Okay, perfect. All right, another one for you to try, Nino. Okay. What is it? Uh, annuity again. Good. Why? Because of the regular constant payments. Exactly. You need to have that before you can use which variable? PMT. Exactly. Yeah. Alright, good. So, solve for what? For future value. Really? Oh, no. For PV. Yes, why? What did the question say? Discount. Yeah. Okay, so if I'm yeah. discounting each cash flow, I'm actually working out the initial amount or the present value yeah your initial okay so quickly work that out using the pmt button don't use the manual way it takes way too long <laughs> all right okay eight percent it's twenty seven thousand nine hundred forty eight and ninety seven cents all right let's check if you're right uh, okay, before we check if you're right, um, let me just write down the variables here. So, do you agree N here would be 5, I yes. here would be 8, Yes. payment would be 7,000, and if you solve, you get the 27,948, which is what you said, right? Yep. Perfect. Okay, and now we can go forwards and backwards using an annuity. Okay. What happens if I have this? Is this an annuity? No. Definitely not. Why not? There's irregular amounts. Is this a simple time value of no. money? Sorry, Anthony, I lost you there again. I'm oh. not sure. What... Okay, is this is this a simple time value of money? Mm, not simple, but it is still time value of money. Yeah, but simple meaning is there a PV and an FE only? Uh, no. No. Okay, so we've got several amounts, right? Uh, yeah. Okay, so if I've got several amounts, I'm going to have to take this back in time. Is there a shortcut? Yes, there is. Okay, remember yeah. earlier, we looked at taking each of those amounts back. Oops, sorry, I pressed the wrong button. This button. Okay, there we go. Taking each of them back, right? Yeah. Okay, if you had to take all of them back, could you? You can. You can, it's... and then you'd have to add them all up, right? Yeah. Okay, so that's a very long way of doing it. The shortcut is to use the cash flow function on the calculator. Yeah. Okay, so how do I do that? Well, I'm going to give you the steps with the HP because you've got it. Okay, so on the okay. HP, you're going to second function clear it. Yes. Okay, once you've cleared the calculator, I need to insert, I need to insert these variables, these values. Okay. Yep. When using the cash flow function on the calculator, it's a trick that we're applying here because we know how the calculator operates. Okay, so I'm not going to worry too much about net present value now because it's not something that you need specifically because you won't have to work it out. What you're going to need specifically is the cash button. Okay, so the cash button on your calculator is a CFJ button or CF button. Do you see that on the uh... calculator? A CF. CF button. Or oh, CFI. Yes, CFJ. Got it. Yes, is yes, it CFI yes, yes. or CFJ or CF something? 
It's CFJ. CFJ. Okay, so that's the right button to use on your calculator. Okay, so when doing a mixed stream of cash flow question, all I needed was the timeline, which I've got, right? Yeah. Now I need to substitute all the amounts into my calculator and then solve for the net present value. Okay, so I'm going to be using this, the NPV, to work it out for me. So what you need to remember is this, the trick. What is the trick? You need to start with zero in the calculator. So on your mm -hmm. financial calculator, you're going to press zero and then press CF, CFJ. Okay. Okay, then it'll, it'll, uh, something will pop up on your screen. Like uh, It'll be like, I think it's CF0 pops up. It's uh, got a CF, Why? a C flow, yeah. and then a CF. Okay, does it, say, does it say like CF1 or CF0? Um, it hasn't got any number next to it yet. Okay, but a, a, a CF did pop up. Yes. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so now you've pressed, so you, you press 0 and then you press the CF button, right? Yes. Okay, now type in 12,000. And press CF. And it, it flashed CF1 and good. now it's got 12,000 on the screen. Okay, good. Now type in 5 and then press CF. Okay. Now type in 11, then press CF. Okay. Type in 10 and then press CF. Okay. And then type in 15 and then press CF. Okay. Okay, so you've done that for all of them? Yep. Okay, so that's the first step. So step number one is to insert the cash flows. Once you've inserted the cash flows, you need a rate so the calculator can do the discounting for you. What is the rate here? It's 7%. 7%. So the next step on your calculator Type in 7 and then press the I over Y button. Okay. Right, and then on your calculator, you'll have color coding. And you'll see an NPV as a color coding second function button. Mm, yes, I've got that. You got it. You see it? NPV. Yes. Okay, so now press, press the second function with the same color and then press the NPV. And then what answer appears on your screen? I've got... 42,885 and 17 cents, and it's got TVM next to it. Okay, all right, so 42,885 is what you've got. Let's check if that's correct. That's the right answer. And that's what you've taken in terms of all the amounts. You've done one step, and you've taken all of those amounts back in time. Okay. Okay, so easy or more difficult to do it that way? much easier it's, to do it that it's way much easier yeah because remember earlier i showed you how to take individual amounts backwards and forwards when we did the twelve thousand, the seven thousand examples yeah okay so if you wanted to you could take all of these back one by one by one and then just sum up the total right yes but we saw how long that takes it's too difficult to do as well because you have to do five separate calculations the room for making error is quite high yes yeah I just do it once on my calculator using a specific function and that gives me the final answer. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Is that right? Yes. Good. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You still okay, Nino? Do you need a break or can we can we go on? No, 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 no. I was just I was trying to figure out something else on this calculator. I'm okay. good to go. If you have questions, ask, eh? Um, I can always pull up a picture of the calculator. We can discuss what or how to use it. I just, I remember last, when I was doing this module last semester, yes. it, when we when I was doing the, uh, the mixed stream cash flows, there was a way to calculate or you press something on the calculator that showed you your monthly payments or something like that. Okay, or this is, that is that's calculate? amortization. That's, that's something oh, okay. separate. Okay. Okay. Okay, right. that's amortization. Amortization use the A that uses the AMRT button on your calculator. Uh, yes, okay. Okay. For for right. mixed streams you use this um you use the CF, you use the uh, cash flow, you use the NPV. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. All right. Okay, we'll contrast that. We'll discuss what amortization is and we'll look at an example as well. So don't worry about that. 
Okay, perfect. Okay. All right. Question here. Can interest only be compounded annually? No. Definitely not. Yeah. What happens if I increase the compounding? Then you increase the rate that it grows at. Good. Okay, so do you agree if I've got time zero here and I've got time one here, that's one year, okay? Yes. Can I break up the year into different portions? Yes. Yes. So here I've got one, two, three periods. So in a year, how many compounded periods do I have in the first one? Uh, in this one, yeah, you've got four compounding. I've got three compounded periods. Sorry, yes, three, yeah. I've got three periods in this one. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, if I look at the second one, if I start T0, T1 year, how many compounded periods do I have there? Six periods. Six periods, correct. Okay, so when looking at compounding, you're focusing on the number of periods, not the number of years. That's why I'm always specific when I say check the variables. Make sure the yeah. variables are the same. Because if they are the same, then you can do the discounting or compounding. Okay. Okay. So what happens when the compounding increases? We'll get a bigger future value. The future value will grow quicker. Yeah. All right. So here's an example for you to try. Okay. I've given you the answer, or not the answer, but the workings for the second one. Okay, we'll discuss this one together. I want you to quickly work out A for us. Give, give, give me an answer for the future value. What is the future value for this amount? Okay. Mm. It's 43,178 and 50 cents. Good. That's correct. Now we're looking at this example. So when you read this example, do you agree you're calculating the future value of 20,000 that's invested at a rate of 8% for eight years, right? Yeah. If I look at the, bo the bottom example, do I still have the same present value? Yes. Do I still have the same time frame? Yes. Do I have the same rate? No. No. Okay, see, notice here, you've got compounded monthly. So if something is being compounded monthly, how many periods would I have every year? 12. Exactly. Okay, so earlier we said we could break up a year into smaller periods if we compound more frequently. So yeah. if I'm looking at N, N doesn't become the number of years, N becomes the number of periods. Okay. So how many periods in 10 years if I'm compounding every month? 120. Exactly. That's why I've got 120 there. Okay. And then if I'm looking at the rate, I, I talk about I12 because this is the rate per month. Yeah, okay. Per so month. how many compounded periods in that period? 12. 12, yes, 12. Okay, so if there are 12 periods... You're compounding each period. Every period, you're going to get 0.66 recurring. Okay. Okay. So on your calculator, and you can do this before. So just be careful with rounding. Okay. Do you know how to change the uh, Do you know how to change the number of decimals you see on your screen? Uh, uh, not right now, but I do remember doing it before. I have to look in the manual again. Okay. I'll tell you how to do it. You press second function. Then you press the DSP. Uh, DSP, I think, is on the equal button. Mm. There's a second yes. function, DSP. Yes, yes, DSP yes. DSP stands for display. Okay, so if you want four decimals, press second function, DSP, and then, and then press four. Okay, all right. And then you've got four decimals. Yes. All right, so be careful when you type in values like this. 8% divided by 12 is 0.66666666, okay? If you round it off to 0.67, your answer is going to be a bit out. Okay. Okay, so what I would do on the calculator is this. On the HP, only for the HP, the other calculators are fine. The HP is not the ver it isn't very user-friendly, but you still get the same answers. You just, need to, uh, you just need, to, you need to provide for the, um, how can I say, the, the bad user interface. Okay, so... 
on on your calculator, type in a hundred and twenty and press N. Okay. Type in twenty thousand and press I. I or PV? I have a Y. The I have a Y. You're putting twenty thousand as the interest rate? Uh oh, sorry, I wrote down I. That's <laughs> that's that's not right. Um, sorry, that's PV. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sorry, wrong wrong variable. Okay, so type in 20,000, press PV. That's right. Okay. Okay. Then you're typing in a rate of this. Do you agree? 0.66. But I'm not going to put in a decimal. I'm going to type in this. On your calculator, you can type in 8. Then press eight divide. divide then press yeah. 12. And then press equals. And then on your screen, you should see 0, 0,666 recurring. Yeah. Okay, once you've got that answer on your screen, now you can press the I. Just press the I now. Uh, no, mine's actually showing it to four decimal places. It's fine. It's, not it's fine if it's four, but, but okay, the, it's showing four decimals, but it actually has more in the memory because you asked the calculator to do the working for you. Okay, all okay, right. You didn't, okay. you didn't insert it as four decimals. Okay. okay. You, okay. You, you asked the calculator to work out 8 divided by 12 first, and then whatever the calculator got as an answer, you then press the I. Okay, all right. Okay, does that make sense? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, yeah. because now internally, in the calculator's memory, there's a lot more sixes, but on the screen, okay. it's only showing six. Okay. Or four, however many decimals you have. All right, perfect. Okay. All right, and then now just press the FE button. What do you see? I've got forty-four thousand three hundred ninety-two and eighty cents. Good. See, that's exact. That's the exact same answer that I've got as well. Okay, because it doesn't provide for any rounding. All right. So, what do you notice? Uh, that you get more on the compounded monthly. Good. Okay, have a look. B has a slightly bigger answer than A only because the compounding is more frequent yeah same present value same in same i the only thing that's different is the rate yeah and the rate makes a big difference and that's why we need to look at a nominal and an effective rate okay okay something else to consider can i look at continuous compounding in terms of making those periods even smaller so how many how many half years in a year? Two. How many quarters in a year? Four. How many months in a year? Twelve. Twelve. So are we splitting those periods? Uh, are they getting smaller or bigger? Smaller. They're getting smaller and we're getting more of them. How many days yeah. in a year? 365. Good. So when looking at continuous compounding, you're looking at making these periods so small that you're literally continuously compounding them. Okay, you're compounding it to infinity, basically. Okay. Okay, so when compounding increases, if you will get larger, we spoke about that. Yes. Is there a limit to the compounding that we can do? Um, not really. You, you can split it up to as small as you want to, but it's, it's not very... I don't know, effective, or it is effective, but it's not very administratively effective. Okay, yeah, so in, in reality, com continuous compounding would be quite difficult to find. Yeah. Okay, but in theory, it does exist. Okay, so yeah. when looking at continuous compounding, right, is there a limit to this? The answer is yes. And they look at limits to infinity. So you said your maths is good. So you probably recognize something like this. Limits tending to infinity. Yeah. Okay, so if I make the n, if n gets bigger and bigger and bigger and tends towards infinity, what am I going to get as a possible amount that it's going to become? All right, or, uh, or, or be lim uh, will be closest to? What do you mean? Closest to, as in, oh. it's it's. What what would your f What would your f v be? Exactly, your f v will tend towards something. It would tend to infinity. 
no, the n will tend to infinity, the future value will tend to a specific amount. Uh. Okay, because remember, you're, you're making your n's bigger and bigger and bigger, but the amount in terms of your future value is going to be limited to the amount of compounding you're going to be doing. Okay, which in this case yes. is continuous. Okay. Okay, so let's talk about, uh, let's use an example. Uh, I think I've got one on the next page. Yes, I do. Okay, so here's one. If I take 10,000 and I continuously compound for two years in a, in a row, okay, and the percentage is 8%, what do I need to do? I need to use a financial calculator for this. Okay, well, I need to use a scientific. Okay, you can't really do this on the HP, okay? You're going to have to do this on a scientific. So do you have a scientific with you there? Yeah, I do. Okay, good. So grab that calculator because it's easier to find E on that calculator. On your scientific, you should look for a button that has this, e to the power, uh, or e to the x, either or. Yes, I've got it. you got it, great. Okay, so that's the button you're using on the scientific calculator to work this out. Okay, so what is the future value? Well, let's work it out. I'm going to type in 10,000, then I'm going to open up a bracket, and then I'm going to press that second function button with the e, then it opens the power sign, and then I'm going to open a bracket and I'm going to type in 0, 0, 8 times how many years? 2. 2. Close bracket and then close that bracket and then press equals on the calculator. And what do I get? Uh, just 2 seconds. Okay. No, that's giving me a syntax error. I think I've cocked up the, the brackets. Okay, just be careful. Put more brackets then. So, so yeah, just type it as in. So type in 10,000, then open a bracket, put in the e, um, e, e to the power, and then does it open a bracket for you already or not? If it does, mm. don't put more brackets. Just use the brackets that they put for you, if they do put brackets. Yeah. It gives me 11,735 and 11 cents. Correct. That's the right answer. Good. Okay. So this amount represents what? Your future value. Correct. The biggest future value you could possibly get because continuous compounding is looking at continuously compounding it. So do you agree if I was compounding for months, okay, the answer will be less than 11, uh, 735 because there's only 12 months in a year. Yeah. Okay, if I compound for days, I'm going to use 365 periods, right? Uh, times two. No, okay, well, yes, times two, but if I'm talking about, okay, so if I'm looking at compounding, um, compounding monthly, okay, if I compound monthly, the future value is going to be less than this 11,735. If I yeah. compound daily, okay, I'm going to compound daily, so every day. The future value is going to be bigger than the monthly, but less than yes. the continuous. Yes. Okay, because continuous is telling you what is the biggest future value that I could get if I literally compound for infant an infinite number of small little intervals okay ever okay not forever but just for the two years but during the two years i'm compounding it forever yeah okay does that make sense yeah yeah, yeah. okay so that's the e that that's the function that you're going to need for the actual calculation when you do the working okay still all right okay yeah, yeah, I'm good. You sure? Okay, great. All right, so earlier I spoke about nominal versus effective. Is there a difference? Yes. Yes, there is. What is the difference? Well, the one takes compounding into account and the one doesn't. Which do I use in the calculation? The effective. effective. That's the one that I use. All right, so now I need to apply something that I need to learn on the calculator as well. So... When working out a rate, a rate is going to be compounded for a specific number of periods. Do you agree? 
Yes. Is it possible to evaluate that rate as is, but if I'm if I'm if I'm looking at a full year? So, for example, if I've got this um, ten percent compounded per annum, okay, versus ten ten percent compounded per month, can I compare those two rates? No. You can't, okay, because looking at those rates, they're both nominal rates. What is a nominal rate? A nominal rate is a quoted rate. Mm. If something is quoted, it doesn't take compounding into account. Okay. Right, so the effective rate is going to provide for the monthly compounding, and that's going to give us a better measure of the actual rate that we derive from the compounding during that particular period. Okay, so what okay. button do you use on the calculator? Well, you're going to use the P over Y button and the EFF for your calculator. So if you've got the CASA, you use the convert. If you've got the SHARP, you use that XY EFF. Okay, you are going to be using the P over Y EFF because that's the calculator that you've got. Right. Mm. You still okay then, you know? Yeah, yeah, I'm just trying to find that button. P over Y, it's at the top. I think it's on the payment. Or the uh, PRC. Okay, got, payment or yes, PRC, so which one? I've got P over Y. Okay, yeah, that's what, it's P over Y. Not the one with the X. There's one with the X and there's one without the X. Yeah, mine's P over Y R. And then that's I've got the EFF percentage. Yes, that's the one. Good. Okay, okay. those right. are the two buttons you're going to be using. Okay. okay. So you've located them. Good. Yep. All right, we'll look at an example. I'll show you what I mean by that. Okay, let's continue. Nominal effective. One is nominal effective. Mm, that is effective. It's nominal because it's quoted. So when you see English, it's quoted. Oh, uh, okay. okay. Is two nominal uh, effective? Nominal then. Okay, is three nominal effective? Effective. Correct. Four, nominal effective. Effective. Correct. Five? Nominal. Nominal. Right, which do we use in the calculator? Uh, three and four. Effective. Okay, so I need to convert nominal to effective. How do I do that? Well, we do it by taking this into consideration. The compounding. So if 8% is compounded quarterly, how much percent do you get each quarter? Two. Correct. So the effective rate, and the notation that I use for effective rate is I. So I use I4. I4 represents what? The effective quarterly interest rate. Because how many quarters in a year? Four. Four quarters, exactly. All right, so if I'm working out the nominal rate, it's quoted, and I can convert nominal to effective. If I convert to effective, I need to take compounding into account. So how much do I get every year? 8%. How many quarters in a year? 4. 4. So the effective rate is 2% per quarter. Okay. That's the effective rate. Because now you're taking compounding into account. Okay. Right. So what would 2's effective rate be? Uh, 9, isn't it? Yes. Because it's, uh. it's I. I1 is equal to 9 over 1, which is 9% per annum. Yeah. Okay, so when you have compounding for a year, your nominal and your effective rates are actually the same. Okay. Okay, and the last one, number 5? Uh, 1.08. Okay, good. So per what month. do I do there? I take 13 and I divide it by 12, which 12. gives me I12. So I12 is 13 over 12, which is 1,08. I think it's 3... Something, something, something percent. Okay, let's just check yeah, it out. Eight, three, three. One comma zero, eight, three, three. Yes, yes, that's right. Okay, three occurring, good. Okay, so those are the two different rates that you can get, nominal or effective. Which are important? Okay. Effective. Always, always, always okay. change it to effective and then just put it into the calculator. Okay. Right, so let's practice a bit. Let's see if you can still calculate future value and present value. Give me A's answer. Okay. 
future value investor one year per annum compounded annually so now because it says compounded annually you just you can carry on with it as six a yes hey because six over six is one Oh, yeah. six over sixty six. Okay, it doesn't change. It's one year. Okay, perfect. That's a thousand and sixty. Good. Next one. Next one. Be careful with this mm. one. Yep. Get a thousand and sixty one and sixty eight cents. Good. Okay, so what does that mean? That means if I have six percent compounded monthly, what does six percent compound monthly actually amount to? Well, do you agree if I don't compound it monthly and I compound it yearly, I get ten sixty. But if I compound it monthly, I get that. So what was the actual return? On Compounded monthly. A and B. No, compounded monthly. What was the actual return? So I started with that. I ended with that. What we, What is the actual return? 61 rand and 67 cents. Which is what percentage? So 61 comma 677812 divided by 1000. What you got over what you had equals how much percentage? And let me just quickly work it out. Six comma one six three one six seven dot dot dot. Yeah, zero commas no. Well, zero, zero. You got zero. You're, sorry, you're, sorry, you got sorry, zero sorry. comma zero six. So that's a decimal. Six comma one seven. That's my calculation that I got. Okay. Yeah. If you times that by a hundred, then you'll get a percentage. Yeah, yeah, I didn't multiply by 100. Okay, but do you agree at 6,163? Yeah. So now what is that? That is the effective annual interest rate, the EAR. Okay, or what, we, uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be calculating on the calculator, which is the EFF. Okay. Okay, so I'm just trying to link it to what we had earlier. So remember on your calculator you found the button EFF with the percentage sign? Yeah. If you had to use a formula, you would use this equation, okay, to get the actual interest rate. Right, which I'm going to show you here. Okay, so EAR is equal to 1 plus the rate, okay, to the power N minus 1. Right, so if I had to put that into my calculator, I'm going to put in 1 comma 06 to the power 12 minus 1. On your calculator, quickly type that in. And see what you get. Uh, oops. Uh -oh. I'm trying to work it out on the financial calculator. It's not working out. Is it not working out? Okay, don't no. worry about the financial. Okay, let's 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 remove that, okay? Let me put this rather. 1m plus m, uh, I, uh, sorry, wrong, 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 wrong. Okay, brackets. 1 plus im to the m equals brackets 1 plus in to the n. Okay, see, this is something additional. We don't actually need this because we're yeah. looking at the effective annual interest rate. Okay, so you would have to use this to get the i1. Okay, so the I1 is going to be the rate compounded monthly, okay, to the power 12. So if I put in the rate, um, what did I have earlier? I had 1 plus 0, 0, 6 to the power 12 minus 1. Okay, what rate yeah. was I given in the question? 6, 6 percent. 6 percent compounded monthly. So if it's compounded monthly, it's I12, so I forgot to do this, divide by 12. All right, okay. so on your calculator, quickly type that in. On your scientific, use scientific rather, it might be easier. Yeah. Okay. 
0,0616. Good. Okay, which is what? And it, it carries on. Correct, which is basically what we had here. Do you agree? Yes. Okay, so that's the effective annual interest rate. Notice you can use fancy formulas. Do you need fancy formulas? No. No, because you've got this, the EFF on the calculator. Yeah. All right, which is brilliant. Okay, that's what we're going to use. All right, so let me show you how to work it out on the actual calculator. Okay, there's the working to show you the effective annual interest rate. Okay. Okay. Uh, you might be wondering where I got this. Okay, this is the 1 plus 0, 0, 6 over 12. Yes. Okay, so now let me show you how to do on your calculator. So do you remember I said we had P over Y? And we must always keep P over Y as 1 on your HP. Yes. Okay, so only on the HP do you, do you have to change it to something else, but you only do it for this one calculation, for calculating the EFF. Okay. Okay, so now when I look at this question, how many periods are we compounding for? 12. 12. All right, so on your calculator, you need to set your P over Y as 12. So type in 12. Then go second mm. function and make a P over Y. Okay. Okay, so now when you go second function, clear your calculator, do you still see 12? Yes. Yeah, you'll still see 12. So now be careful. Again, another note, a caution. For the HP guys that use <coughs> HPs, you need to always convert that back to 1. If you forget to convert it back to 1, it's going to keep it as 12 for every other calculation. Okay. Okay, so just make a note that you need to convert it back to one after you've done this calculation. Is that alright? Okay. Yep. Okay. So now I need to put in my rate. So what rate do I have in the question? Six. Six, six percent. percent. So now type that in as your I over Y R. Okay. Okay, so six I over Y R. Got that? Yep, yep. And now, just press second function, EFF. And it's giving me 6.17, but if I increase my decimal points, then I get that same number. Correct, good. And that's how you work it out on the calculator. So don't do it using formulas if you can do it using the calculator. Yeah. Okay, just remember, what buttons do I use? You saw it in the notes earlier, it's the P over Y and... The EFF. The EFF, yes, good. Yeah. Okay. All right, making sense? Yep. Yeah, it's not so bad. We'll do lots of this later on when we do past papers and the assignments. Okay, so okay. can you work this one out for me? What's the EFF? Mm, compounded quarterly, so you got to go P of 4. Whoops. Six point one four. Six point one four. Perfect. If you round off, you get the same answer. Yes. Yeah, I get six point. If I increase the points, it's six point one three six three five five zero six. Perfect. Yeah. That's correct. So the EFF that you get on the calculator is right. Notice how okay. I've used this as well. It doesn't matter what you use. You can use this if you want to. It's in your notes. You get the same answer. It's not going to make a difference. Yeah. It's okay. quicker to do it on the calculator. Much quicker. Yeah, and in the exam, time is definitely a, a very precious commodity. You need to try to work as quickly as you can um, in the short questions, so that gives you more time for the long ones. Okay. Okay. All right, so I've given you a few examples here, Nina, toward the end, okay? We've got some practice examples here to see if you'd be able to calculate the answers. So, first one, what do I have? What do I, ha what do I actually need to work out? You are looking for your future value. Good, so, quickly work it out. So, okay. On the financial calculator. I've got 
$41,175.24. Perfect. Well done, eh? That's a really good effort. So, do you agree you had to convert everything to what? Months. Why? Because the, the values do need to be all the same. Yes. Okay, you had months here. And you had yeah. years there. So it's easier to convert the years to months. Yeah. Well done. Okay, so that's the right answer for the first one. Okay. Try this one. See how you do here? Um, I get a value of no, something's wrong. I've got 438,721. Okay, so let's discuss this one. All right, yeah, 400 is way too big, hey? Yeah. All right, what am I working out? I put it into beginning mode. Was that right? That is correct. So that's the first bit. I think you might be right, though. Let's check the answer. Yeah, you got it. 438,721. You got it. All right. Okay, that was fine. Yeah, I think it's better to check first and then we and then we can see if it's right or wrong. So yeah, why <laughs> is this 438? Because you're buying the annuity. Okay, you're investing okay. in this annuity. Okay, right. so if you purchase the annuity, it's going to give you 100,000 at the beginning of the year for the next five years if you start off with that in this account. Okay, okay so you're perfect. Spot on. Begin mode is key because of that keyword over there. Yeah. Good. Okay, so that was fine. It was right. Okay. Okay, great. Try this one. done something I've got 909 and 70 cents okay so with this one you're looking at what begin mode again why because it says start of each month correct okay so I'm depositing amounts when every um, every month yes is that important yeah because it changes your end hang okay. on what did I do wrong all right, so I, the, the most important bit with this calculation is which variable stands out the most? It's the payment. Because do you agree, I can't change the payment here. If I change the payment, it's going gonna, it's gonna to change the question completely. So, for example, if okay. I have 500 Rand monthly payments, is that the same as one 6,000 payment? Because there's 12 mm -hmm. months in a year, so 12 times 5 is 6,000. Yeah. It's not the same. Making one oh, no, payment, sorry, sorry, Anthony, no. making making one payment of six thousand is very different to making twelve payments of five hundred. Yeah. Do you agree? Yes. So in this question, the focus is on the payment. You need to keep the payment as is, and you need to convert everything else. Okay. Okay. So I converted right. the N into months and I converted the I into the monthly rate, which was compounded monthly, so that wasn't so bad. And then I had to solve for the, P, the future value. Yes. Okay. okay. Uh, future value, yeah, eight, 82,349 and 37 cents. Awesome. Okay, you got it yeah. this time around. Right, well done. I think what wrong in the first time, instead of pressing payments, I pressed... Uh, 500 PV. Oh, okay. Yeah, silly mistake. 
Yeah. yeah. Okay, but that's really good. Your 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 math seems to be very strong. So, um, I don't know if you guys get to choose subjects uh, or how many subjects you get to choose, but I know that DSC 1630 takes all of this stuff a bit further. So, if you if you're strong with mathematics and if you like the financial maths and if you and if you do have an option to choose that module, uh, yeah. it'll actually be quite an easy module for you to pass because I can see you're good with the maths and you, you're good with the calculator. Yeah, so just something yeah. to keep in mind if um, if you get to choose subjects and you if you if you still have choice, uh, maybe pick that one because it's going to be an easier one for you to pass um, compared to maybe let's say um, I don't know um, economics three or uh, investments or um, management or one of those. Um, based on what I've seen you do tonight, um, I think you'll you'll be very good at at passing that um, module very easily. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, happy with those workings. Yep. Great. Okay, then I've got a summary here. In terms of calculations, with the short summary looking at all the different possibilities where you could be given a present value or a future value. Sometimes you need to work out the future value and that could be a lump sum. Sometimes you, you need to work out a future value of an annuity and then you need to find how many of the variables. Three of the four. Okay, so when Penny, you, broke, you broke up there a little bit. Okay, when when I look at a lump sum or an annuity, minimum how many variables do I need? Three. Minimum three variables. Good. Yeah. Okay, so in a time value of money question, as long as I've got three variables or more, I'll be able to do the calculation. Okay, later on yes. when we look at bonds. Okay, that's another uh, section that uses all of this. Okay, so the bond section covers time value of money again, but it's application. And then the share valuation also looks at applying the time value of money. Right, so this section that we've done tonight is so important because it gets used in other sections later in the same module. Okay. Okay. Just remember to use the cash flow when you've got irregular mixed cash. You use the CF yeah. button on your calculator, that's the best way of doing it. Yeah. And then timelines are key. Right, we, we draw timelines to make it a bit easier to identify what's happening in the question to then work out certain values or amounts. Okay. okay. Right, and there's the note about amortization. Okay. Uh, I think amortization I'm looking at next week, if I'm not mistaken. There's a note about that. Okay, but we, there is there is a, a slide on amortization in your in your set of notes for the, the course. It is something that we will look at. Just to maybe mention it now you're going to be using the AMRT button, okay, on the HP, right? Yep. And when using the AMRT button on the, uh, on the HP, you're then going to also use the equals, right, as a way to read the different figures, okay? But we'll, we'll look at that when we actually do the, um, the amortization, okay, because you're inserting values into the actual loan, okay? Perfect. Um, deposits, something that can be used here, Annuities we've discussed, part of retirement, and then calculating different returns. Okay, that's more application to the rate, okay, the I's that you have. Okay, nominal or effective, and the effective annual interest rate, which we know we can calculate using the EFF. When looking yeah. at calculations, which three variables are the most important? The interest rate, the, the period, and the, the payments. Why? Because they all have to be the same. They all have to have the same time base. Correct. Good. Okay, so they have to have the same unit of measurement. So if I've got quarters, the I needs to be I4, right? The quarterly rate. Yes. And the payments must be every quarter. Right. That's so important. And which is the most important out of those three? Uh, the... Period. The payment. Why? Because the payment is going to determine how often you're going to be making those payments. Because okay. if I make yeah. if I make five hundred rand per month, okay, for a year, is that the same yeah. as as uh, what will that be? Six hundred, yeah, six thousand. 
six thousand per year. Yeah. Are those the same? Uh, no. No. Okay, because if I look no. at time value of money, if I draw a timeline, okay, I'll have five hundred here. I'll have five hundred there. I'll have five hundred here, and I'll have twelve of them. Okay, yeah. versus one amount of six thousand over here. Yeah. Okay, so this six thousand is very different to all of those five hundreds moved forward. Yeah. Okay, so can I use the payment or can I convert the payment? I can convert the payment, but then you need to restructure the loan, and that's slightly different. Okay. But okay. if we're just focusing on the payment, the payment is your focus. Everything must be based on the payment. Focus All on right. the payment and change everything else to make it look the same as the payment. Okay. Okay. Is that all right? Yep. Awesome. Great. Right. Um, okay. And then that's the end of this set of notes. Okay. So there are some examples in the study guide. We will be looking at more in the, uh, in the assignments. And then we obviously will look at past papers as well. Um, when practicing the actual time value of money. Important section tonight because it links to bonds and it links to shares later. Those are one of the later modules that you cover um, further down the line. Okay. Okay. Any questions, you know? No, I'm good. All right, uh, that, awesome. was a, that was a good session. Great. So yeah, um, it's, it's a lot of calculator work. So the calculator is everything. Even in the exam, if you really do well with the calculations, you can almost pass, we just need to cover more theory and a few other bits and pieces um, and that's pretty much what the exam looks like from a test point of view. Okay. Okay. Uh,